Well, hi everyone. My name is Dr. Gina Heathcote. Welcome to our webinar on um, from the Centre for Studies here at SOAS. I'm going to talk uh, in this webinar on the MA in Gender Studies and Law, which hopefully you're all going to come and join us for uh, come, come September later on in this year. So what the purpose of today is to give you a little bit more insight into how the Gender Studies and Law program works, but also the Centre for Gender Studies as well. Um, in addition, if you want to send me a question while I'm talking, please do just uh, type in a question and I'll do my best to give you an answer while also getting through the script and the slides that I have already prepared. Um, so really lovely to have you join me. Sorry if I'm just a floating voice. I really look forward to seeing you in person in September. Um, so I am Dr. Gina Heathcote and uh, like the Gender Studies and Law program, I am actually split across two departments. So the Gender Studies and Law program uh, was something that I designed uh, that really, I really wanted to reflect my passion for both gender studies and for law. Uh, and I am split, I work in both the School of Law here at SOAS as well as the gender, Centre for Gender Studies. Uh, and of course, if you enrol in the Gender Studies and Law program, you will also be taking courses both in uh, law and in gender studies. So a little bit about the centre, because although you will be uh, working in both gender studies and law at SOAS, uh, you will, your home, your institutional home will be the Centre for Gender Studies. Uh, we're kind of small in terms of permanent staff, but we do have centre members across all of SOAS, which is one of the things we're most proud of. Every discipline at SOAS has colleagues working on gender and sexuality, and you will have access and work with uh, many of those during your time studying with us. So in terms of permanent staff, our current centre chair is Professor Nadia Ali, and actually that's her in the photo uh, with women in Kurdistan, uh, work that she was doing, uh, research that she was doing, uh, in working with Kurdish women actually in southern Turkey this time, although she's also worked with them in northern Iraq. Uh, I am the Gender Studies and Law convener, so I run the program, and if you have any academic questions or concerns while you're here, I'll be the person that you come and talk to. Dr. Uinoa Keech uh, is the MA in Gender Studies Program convener and will also be uh, the convener of your core course, Gender Theory, uh, once you arrive. And Dr. Alyosha Tudor is the MA in Gender Studies and Sexuality convener and also runs some fantastic modules uh, that you can pick up as um, optional modules on your degree. So as I said, although we are for uh, permanent staff in the Centre for Gender Studies, we are incredibly well supported by our centre members. So if you go on to the Centre for Gender Studies website, you'll see not only our core staff, but also members coming from every department and discipline at SOAS. And these colleagues help us in various ways. Sometimes they give guest lectures, they're heavily involved in our events programme, which I'm going to talk to you towards the end, talk about at the end. And they also uh, provide dissertation supervision, uh, specialist dissertation supervision for our students if they're working on an area that we feel would benefit uh, from the specialist uh, expertise of our colleagues. Okay, in terms of administrative support, we also have a dedicated uh, gender department officer for gender studies, Vian Hilly, uh, and you can see her contact details there. She's wonderful support to both centre staff and sent to students, uh, nothing's too difficult. There's nothing about SOAS she doesn't know that she can't help you with. Uh, if you have a question, an admin question already, feel free to send her or drop her a line on the gender studies at soas.ac.uk uh, email address. Uh, she actually is one of our former students, so you can also, when you get here, talk to her experience about being at SOAS. And actually, she was a law student, so she has a great insight into this particular degree on gender studies and law and has taken many of our courses on this particular program. Okay, so a little bit more about the centre, both in terms of how we're organised and what we do, but also how we approach gender, what we think about. Uh, and I want to kind of tailor this a little bit to the gender studies and law program uh, in particular. So the Centre for Gender Studies uh, runs two different types of postgraduate programs, both the taught degree, which is what you'll be enrolling on, and postgraduate research degrees, so doctoral studies in gender studies. Uh, and we like to keep, uh, you know, a real kind of connection between the two programs. You'll meet many of our research students. Uh, quite a few of our master's students go on and become our research students. So if that's what you're interested in, let us know early on uh, and we'll 
and make sure you have the information you need for that to happen. Uh, we actively promote the research community, not only with our students, but through bringing in our centre members uh, to present their research, either in through events uh, or through, as I said before, guest lecturing. And this makes a fine, fantastic dynamic community working on both gender and sexuality at SOAS. I'm really proud that a, a good number of those colleagues are actually working in the School of Law and the work that they're doing on gender and sexuality uh, it definitely enhances the work that you will encounter, the research community that you in, encounter here at SOAS. And this really allows an interaction for students and staff. Uh, we see everyone as kind of engaged in an intellectual project rather than this kind of sense that you're the students, we're the staff. Uh, we organise lots of events, uh, social, uh, social activities for our students, um, and we like to try and give you a kind of an entrenched connection to different kinds of community organisations and media uh, activists as well. But beyond that, I think what's important and what's distinct about the Centre for Gender Studies, and certainly for me coming from more of a legal background, is the way that we approach gender. So we approach gender, you might have guessed already, in an interdisciplinary fashion. We don't think gender belongs as a kind of analytical tool in a single uh, department or discipline. And in fact, what we're interested in is not only that gender emerges across the different disciplines, but how that can kind of really lead in contemporary interdisciplinary studies and research. And we hope that that becomes part of the work that you do here. Obviously, being on the gender studies and law program, you will be moving between two disciplines all the time. Uh, and I always say to my students, when we're in the law school, that the understandings of gender, sexuality and law tend to lag behind some of the contemporary gender theory. And I think that that allows you to really produce cutting edge writing on particularly feminist legal theories, but also the study of gender and sexuality in law, something that's increasingly important given the attention that both states and international institutions are now paying to gender and sexuality. In addition to this, we regard gender as intersectional, and by that I mean gender as a power relationship that is engaged, produced, and understood, or could only be understood, through thinking through gender's intersectional relationship with other power relationships, uh, particularly race, class, sexuality, ableism, religion. And in taking an intersectional approach, we think about voice, we think about who speaks, we think about privilege, uh, and we think about how focusing only on gender potentially sustains certain types of privileges uh, for some women and really alienates other women. So we spend a lot of time uh, thinking about what it means to take seriously, uh, serious and intersectional approach to gender that is derived from an understanding of how power operates in our communities. Furthermore, SOAS as an institution and Centre for Gender Studies in particular uh, are interested in how we decolonise knowledge and the, and the contemporary projects on decolonising knowledge. What does it mean to decolonise uh, gender and sexuality? Uh, whose voice do we listen to? Uh, what kinds of materials uh, in your classroom, how are you encouraged to think about your own privilege and access to materials or knowledge structures? So we think a lot about production of knowledge and gender's role in that and how gender uh, might also be a space of harm and violence through that, so um, civilising discourses in particular. At the same time, uh, through some of our fantastic modules on sexuality, you will be exposed to both study of queer and trans theories. Uh, and I hope it goes without saying uh, that our approach is ground in thinking through gender and sexuality from non-Western starting points, acknowledging non-Western feminist histories, uh, their entrenched uh, stories and knowledge uh, that are sometimes dismissed and for me in international law sometimes uh, ignored or silenced. And thinking about what, how they challenge dominant uh, forms of, of gender or feminist theory. Okay, so I want to go through the program structure. So as you probably know, we run a number of different MA programs, MA in Gender Studies, uh, a pathway in the Middle East, uh, study of the Middle East, uh, MA in Gender and Sexuality. But what I'm going to go through today is the MA in Gender Studies and Law. Um, and this is just to give you a better understanding of how it works. So you are required to, um, while you're here at SOAS, take on 180 credits. The first 60 of those will be uh, assigned to your dissertation, which is due in the summer uh, after you finish your studies. In addition to that, you have to take 120 taught credits, and I'm going to go through those in a moment. 
But I just want to tell you, and um, I hope that you're already aware, but part of the MA in Gender Studies and, and Law requires you to attend the pre-sessional law course. So this won't accrue you any credits, but it is compulsory for anyone that has not previously studied law. So if you've studied law and you have a kind of sense of legal analysis and legal research skills, please get in touch and I can give you an exemption from the course. Uh, but I find that even people that have studied law before enjoy coming along. It's co-taught uh, to all our MA in law students. So you meet a lot of the students that you're going to be working with during the year. Starts on Monday, the 10th of September and concludes on the 21st of September. So two weeks of lectures that you come in, you're not assessed at the, at the end, but it really gives Gives you an insight to how to work with law, hopefully dem demystifying uh, what it means to undertake legal studies uh, at any law school, but particularly here at SOAS. Now, in addition to that, you are required to take a number of core modules. The first main core module, which all of our students take, including our research students in our first year, is the Gender Theory and the Study of Asia, Africa and the Middle East. This is a year-long course. As I said, everybody takes this course. It's a fantastic way to get to know uh, all your fellow students. It's taught by Dr. Owino Okech. It's challenging, it's engaging. Uh, our students uh, give us lots of great feedback about this particular very bespoke course. Uh, you also have a weekly tutorial where you have an opportunity to really think more closely about some of the readings and the knowledge that's being discussed in the lectures. Now, because you're gender studies and law students, you are also required to take an additional half module uh, as a core course. And this is the gender sexuality and law theories and methodologies course, which runs in term one. I run this course and I run it together with my colleague, Vanya Hamzik. Um, and we think through the development of gender theory, feminist legal theories, uh, study of sexuality in relation to law. And it's there to give you a kind of strong theoretical and methodological understanding of what it means to take gender theory to law. Because of course, once we come to law, we have sometimes more pragmatic uh, goals that might be refined uh, by the very constraints of law. And we think about what law is and what options uh, gender law reform offers. We think about some of the law, gender law reform we might already know it know about. Of course, that's paired with a second gender and sexuality in law course called Selected Topics, which you could take uh, as an optional module. You are also required to take a dissertation methods in gender studies module in term one. This is a great course where you work with Dr. Oketch uh, to really think about what your dissertation is going to be both focused on and what are the requirements for a dissertation, what are the different ways of kind of writing a dissertation. You do a presentation on your dissertation topic course it might change and then you submit a proposal for your dissertation as the assessment for that course uh, which is sometime that assessment happens sometime in February and allows you to get some feedback uh, from centre staff about the quality of your proposal what you might do next uh, readings for example. Now, in addition to all of those core courses and the pre-sessional course, uh, you require to take uh, 30 credits from the Gender Studies List 1, which you can see on the website. So these are Gender Studies modules that are either taught by Centre for Gender Studies colleagues or by uh, colleagues in other disciplines, but that have sexuality and gender at the kind of core of their focus. Uh, and then because you are Gender Studies and Law course, uh, law students, you are required to take 30 credits from a law list. Now, this is kind of revised every year, and it, these are courses that we think uh, work well for the program. And if you've got some questions about that, please drop me an email. I'm more than happy to advise you. I know the course as well. Uh, I can really give some guidance or send me a question now, even. And then it's not an optional, but actually compulsory element of the degree is to then submit your dissertation, which is 12,000 words for law students, slightly longer than other gender studies uh, dissertations. And the reason for that is because law, law modules tend to require you to do a footnote method rather than in-text citations. We'll talk to you about that a lot more once uh, you arrive. So a little bit more about the dissertation. Now, as I said, 12,000 words for MA in Gender Studies and Law students. Your supervisor will be allocated from the CGS staff list or, as I mentioned before, it might be that we think that your research area would benefit from working from one of our members uh, to the centre who might work particularly in that area. For example, uh, my colleague Vanya Hamzik, who teaches on the Gender Sexuality Law course, takes on quite a few dissertations for us. 
um, mostly because he works on issues around sexuality in South Asia, but also uh, working in archives and thinking about uh, colonial histories of gender and sexuality in Africa. That's quite specific work, um, and we think that people benefit from working with him. He's a fantastic colleague. Uh, you design your topic and then we support you in framing that topic and putting it together. It should relate to your studies at SOAS and hopefully uh, also engage the SOAS regions, but the SOAS regions include diaspora communities, so it could be looking at issues of race, for example, in diaspora communities in, in the UK or Europe. After you've finished the dissertation in gender studies module, you've done a presentation on your dissertation and you've submitted your proposal, uh, you then we encourage you to work with your supervisor through both term two and term three. Uh, the, the expectation is that you would have three meetings with your supervisor really to help design the project. Think about, you know, is it too broad? Can you bring in specific kinds of readings and talk about some of the ideas and the framing of it? The expectation is that then you go ahead and write it on your own over the summer with a deadline in September and we give you plenty of guidance along the way. You're certainly not left on your own for that. So last of all, I want to talk to you about what perhaps is harder to capture. I'm sorry, this slide's a bit messy, but uh, on the website, but I think is such an important part of coming to SOAS to uh, study gender studies. Uh, and that is our event series. So the one that's most important, I think, for our master's students is the CGS seminar series. It's a hugely pop popular seminar series, happens every fortnight in term time and uh, is particularly uh, there for our master's students. In fact, we expect you to attend the seminar series on Thursday evenings and through the seminar series, we hope that we can enhance your experience here at SOAS, encountering research and knowledge from key scholars working on the SOAS regions uh, and their diaspora and working across topics on gender, sexuality, law, which I think is the real focus across the three different programs that we run here at SOAS. Um, in addition, we have planned for March next year, fantastic conference uh, called Gender X is being run by my colleague Aliosha Tudor and also Dr. Rahul Rao, who's one of our colleagues, Center for Gender Studies member and also politics department. Uh, colleague and so this gender X will be is a study of how gender and sexuality gender identity sexual sexual identity are understood in the SOAS regions uh, a kind of decolonization decolonizing knowledge project that thinks beyond western tropes around gender and sexuality if you can't wait then I really encourage you to look up Queer Asia they have a Facebook page they're on the SOAS website uh, this is an annual conference that some of our former students run every June so it's a great opportunity to come and meet some of the both staff and students here at the center and the Queer Asia conference happens next Tuesday on campus uh, starts with fantastic keynote in fact Vanya Hamsik is one of the keynote panel that happens next Tuesday in the 26th I think at 5 p.m. At, at SOAS. Um, it's the former master student of ours, sort of gender and sexuality degree, along with uh, one of our current research students, uh, have put this together four years ago and it just gets bigger and more fantastic every year. Uh, so do come along if you're in London uh, and you can make it. Um, great, so that's about all that I've got to say. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the last week of September, but actually I'm going to see you before that because if you come for the pre-sessional, we will have a lunch where just gender studies and law students get together uh, and talk about, you know, and I can answer any questions or feel free to send me an email, uh, you know, anytime and I'll come back to you. Um, thanks very much uh, for listening. See you in September.